Hi, my name is Wayne Fox and this screencast is about the graduated filter tool in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, more commonly referred to as the gradient tool. The graduated filter tool is considered a local adjustment and thus is located in the local adjustment bar here in Lightroom. If I click on the tool, you'll notice I can control many of the same things that I can control in my basic tab creating global adjustments. The difference is these adjustments will only apply to part of my image. To create a graduated filter on my image, I need to select the part that I want to appear on. If I click, that's where the filter will be strongest with the transition line to where the filter will end. You'll notice that this made no change because I have no adjustment. Once I create a graduated filter, I can then make adjustments to see the effect. The first tip I have regards that. Normally, even if you want to control something other than exposure or brightness, it's a good idea to dial in a setting here that's exaggerated. So as you create your filter, you can get a pretty good idea where the transition area is going to be. Also, it's much easier if you create your filter to do so rather quickly and not try to get it very accurate because it is a difficult thing to position accurately. Once you create that filter, you can move it by clicking on the tack. You can change either of your gradation areas and you can rotate it by clicking on the center line. If you click the center line close to the pin, it will rotate very quickly and very coarsely. If you want to control it more finely, you click far away from the pin and that gives you a much finer control of the rotation. If a filter is selected, it will have a black dot in the pin. If you add a second filter, you'll notice that it is now the active filter. To make any change, make sure that the filter you want to change is selected and then dial in your adjustments. You can apply more than one adjustment to any given filter. For example, I could take this to a negative exposure value and then I could apply a tint. Anytime I want to change those things, I can simply go back and modify them. Or I can double click on any of the actual words here to reset that to zero. The guides give you an idea where the transition is going to begin and going to end. Because of the transition look of the graduated filter, it appears much like a gradient that you would create in Photoshop. And that's why most people actually call this the gradient tool rather than the graduated filter tool. The reason it's named the graduated filter tool is because it does an effect very similar to using a graduated filter in front of your camera lens, which is a technique that has been used for many, many years. And I still do it myself on occasion. The guides themselves can be turned off or on by pressing the H key. There are two modes to the guides. If I turn the guides on while my cursor is over the image, you'll notice when I drag my cursor off to the side, the guides disappear. And when I drag it back on, they reappear. Sort of an auto hide mode. If on the other hand I turn the guides on while my cursor is off the image, they will stay on all of the time. And of course, pressing H hides the guides and they will stay off until you explicitly turn them back on again with the H key. The last thing is this little toggle switch right here, which lets me temporarily disable the effect of the filter and turn it back on. To speed your workflow, there are several little tips I would give you. First, of course, is to use some kind of an adjustment that is much, much stronger or even a density adjustment even though you don't plan on making that adjustment. So you can see where that filter is going to be. So I'm going to put in a two stop change here. You notice I was able to double click and type the number in directly. I can also click and use the scrubber or I can actually click the little tab. And let's create a filter. If I want to create another filter, there are several options. If I adjust that filter to where I want it to go, and I want to create a new filter, I can click New, or I can hit the Escape key, which will deselect that current filter. You'll notice when I did that, it reset the filter to minus two. 
So if I click new or use the escape key, my next filter will start at the same value my last filter started at. On the other hand, if I make an adjustment to a filter and I create a new filter by simply clicking somewhere else on the image, you'll notice that the starting point is the same value as the filter that was selected. You can even do some creative things like create a band in the middle of the image. For example, if I created a filter that went this way, another filter that went the other way, I put the opposite value of those filters in my basic tab. So I added it to whatever value was already there. I've effectively neutralized what is going on in this part of the image and I've left a area in the middle of which I can now apply various adjustments to. So I have three images I want to quickly add some graduated filters to give you an idea of things I do to speed it in my workflow. In this particular image of my grandson from a couple of years ago, I want to add some graduated filters that simulate the effect we used to obtain using on-camera vignettes in front of our lens. I could certainly quickly dial in some post-crop vignetting and darken the corners, but before I do that, I want to darken this entire region down here. So the first tip here is when I create a new graduated filter, no matter what adjustment I'm actually planning on making, I will almost always start with this filter set to the full four stop overexposure value. It gives me a little bit better visualization of the transition area and how it's going to affect it. The next thing I need to mention is when you hold the shift key down and you create a filter, that will force the filter to stay straight. As you can see from the image, I can get a fairly good feel for how this filter is going to affect the bottom of his hands and his shirt by how, how light they go and I can kind of get an idea of the transition. Now double clicking any word here will reset that value to zero and then I will dial in that value till visually where I like it. Now I want to take this bottom a little darker than that. Again I'm going to, I'm going to create a new filter click the word new so I can see it. I want a little softer gradation. I'm going to hold the shift key again but not go into his hands. And now I pretty much like that. Double click and I'll bring that down a little bit more. Now I can go ahead and add my corner vignetting with my post crop vignetting tool. So that's where I started and within about 10 seconds was able to do this. One of the advantages of using these tools in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw is they aren't affecting your image. These are adjustments that will not be made to your image until you render it into a visible format such as a TIFF file or output to a printer. Even though the graduated filter tool creates a very straight line, a lot of times you can use it in areas that you think you might not be able to. I want to darken down the entire top of this tree line but to do so I've got to dip into the top of the trees a little bit. I create a new filter. As I said before I will quickly drag that create a very narrow transition but I won't try to get that too accurate because it's just too hard to do. I'm going to go ahead and get it about where I like it. You'll notice I'm hitting the top of those trees a little bit but it's not going to be a problem. Double click and now I'm going to bring that whole area down. Now that's not quite as far as I like it, want it to go but I can't do the effect by bringing it all down because then I'm affecting the top of the trees too much. So I'll just simply create another new filter up in here. It's going to be a little softer. Again, I'm not trying to get it very accurate at first. It's much easier to tweak it after the fact. Then double click and bring that area down a little bit more. The switch at the bottom here will toggle the filters off and on so it gives you an idea of what you've done and where you've at. In this particular image I want to add another new filter. I'm going to start it about where this natural fall off line is. Drag it up. In this case I'm going to double click it and adjust it while I can see my guides to follow that line. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring it down just a little bit and then I'm going to add one more at the bottom. I'm going to actually click off the image I'm going to hold it fairly straight and then tweak the angle a little bit. That's a little too much. 
bring it up a little bit double click and bring that down a little bit more so this is what I started with that's what I ended up with in all of about 15 seconds this is an image that I want to show another tip that I sometimes use when I have a problem like this a lot of times I want to get a feel for how much adjustment to make before I create my filter to do that I will just go to my basic tab note where my exposure value is adjust that till visually it looks about right which is about right there which is about one and a quarter stops I'll hit command Z to undo that and now I'll go back up to my exposure setting up here and I will dial in that number here so I'm going to take it down about one and a quarter stops now I can see the transition area has got to be in here somewhere so quick, click quick and drag I want that to be fairly soft so it's not obvious now I fine tune and there you go last thing is the sky most of the time in an image like this you would just click here and drag a quick gradient all the way to the bottom darken that sky down and that would look pretty good but there might be times where you want to do something a little different than that In this case I want to darken the entire sky down and then add some darkness to the top to do that I will set my exposure to zero I will create a graduated filter barely above the horizon because it's straight I can hold a shift key down I'll try to get the middle line just a little bit below where that horizon is now I'm going to dial in some exposure value that I'm going to exaggerate it and as you can tell I've left a little highlight over here so I'm going to go ahead and tweak that down a little bit I might need to expand it just a little bit and I'll just keep working with that to that highlights gone and yet I really haven't darkened the top of the water then I'll bring that back and now I'll bring that entire sky down without really affecting the water finally adding my last filter to darken the sky from here I want it to be very soft and drag all the way down holding the shift key down because I know it needs to be straight double click and bring this down and there you go so we started here and within about 15 20 seconds we ended up here so very quickly I want to show the differences of this tool in Photoshop when I open an image in Photoshop rather than simply editing it in Photoshop I always open it as a smart object the reason I open it as a smart object is all of the adjustments that I made in Lightroom are retained and that can be edited all I do is double click on my smart object in my layers palette that will open the image in Adobe Camera Raw and you'll notice up here I have a graduated filter tool and when I select it all of the graduated filters I created in Lightroom appear I can edit those filters just like I could in Lightroom I can click on one to make it active and I can make adjustments you'll notice that the interface is slightly different in Adobe Camera Raw I have a green line which starts the beginning of my transition to a red line which marks the end of it I have no center line either either of those lines work to rotate the tool clicking either of the either the red dot or the green dot lets me change the position of the gradation and clicking on this black and white line in the middle lets me move the tool around but other than interface the filters work identically and the effect is identical in Adobe Camera Raw and in Lightroom so there I go now if I click OK you'll see the smart object updates and my changes have now appear and anything else I've done in the image and layers above it aren't affected so there you have it that is the graduated filter tool more commonly known as the gradient tool in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw it's a great filter the best tip I can give you is when you create a filter do it quickly use a setting that lets you visualize it easily and then fine-tune it with your adjustments it'll be much faster in your workflow